I'm going to show you how you can use Power BI to look at your revenue or really any other performance metric in a brand new way in terms of frequency, reach, and yield, or in other words, fry. Let's get started. Now, if you're already familiar with this concept, uh, I, I would love to hear from you. Just leave a comment and let me know how well has this worked for you? How easy or hard have you found to implement it using whatever tools you're using, Power BI or something else? If you have never heard of this approach, I would I, I really appreciate it. If you watch this video, go and try to apply it and let me know what the results were. Just leave a comment down below. Now, this concept was taught to me by somebody far smarter than me, Apoorva Agrawal, and we crossed paths at Microsoft Finance. Uh, yeah, I'm an MBA, super smart guy. I believe he's moved on to Google now. But we had been working on building financial reports for a while, and I wouldn't say I had seen it all by the time. Clearly, I hadn't. But I thought I, I knew quite a bit. And then one day, he walked into my office and blew me away by introducing this concept to me. And the reason why I love this was that it's simple. It, it's simple and it's elegant and it's easy to understand. It really helps you uh, break down things and really focus on uh, how you can make an impact. So I'm going to introduce the concept to you and I'm going to use two scenarios. The first scenario, I'm going to talk about revenue and the other scenario, I'm going to talk about website visits. What I want to truly underscore here is this, that this methodology, the frequency, uh, frequency, reach and yield, you can use for pretty much any performance metric out there, right? So I'm going to give you two examples, but hopefully it'll be clear that you can adapt it to pretty much anything else. So in terms of revenue, when we're looking at frequency, reach and yield, for a first thing that I would do just for myself, I know I'm going to break the acronym, is that I like to think of this in, in that order, in terms of reach frequency and then yield. So stay with me. I know that it's not as cool an acronym. So when I'm looking at revenue, then reach for me is how many unique customers are purchasing. Simple as that. So let's say in a month, 100, 100 unique customers bought something from me. Frequency is, well, great. I got 100 customers, but how often do they come in? Do they just buy once from me or do they come in like three times a month? And the last one is yield. Well, great, I got 100 customers and maybe they come to me three times a month, but every time they come along, how much do they spend? Do they spend a dollar, ten dollars, a thousand dollars? And now if you have all of these three components, guess what happens when you multiply reach, frequency, and yield? So if 100 users visited me three times in a month and every time they bought uh, items worth $10, then 100 times 3 times $10, that's my total revenue. So RFI in this case is total revenue. That's the metric that I'm tracking. But now I can break it into these three components and truly understand, look at another level of detail to understand what's going on with my business. Where could the problem be? Where could the growth come from? Where should I focus my attention on? Now, in terms of website visits, you can just flip it around and say reach is how many unique visitors you get on your website. Frequency is how often do they visit. And yield is, well, once they're on, how much time do they spend on average? And in this scenario, if you multiply reach, frequency, and yield, you get the total time spent on the website. So in the same manner, you can break out pretty much any performance metric on here. Now, let's go to the demo and let's see how we can do this in Power BI. And as I was saying earlier, this is one of those things which, uh, which is elegant and, and simple to understand, but doesn't necessarily make it easy. In fact, in the old world, I think I had tried to do it, but yeah, it would have been incredibly hard in the old Excel world. But now with the power of VI, this is pretty awesome. So reach. So I'm gonna build these one by one. Let's start with reach. This is the number of unique customers purchasing for me. So I'm just gonna to go to modeling. And again, this is our standard AdventureWorks database. So we go to new measures. And I'm going to just say reach equals distinct count of my customer key and from my sales table, not my my uh, customer uh, table itself, because I want the number of unique purchasing customers. And I'm going to format it a whole number. Uh, let's put a comma in there. And that's good. And I'm just going to stick that in there. Uh, now, where did that? So if this has happened to you, like where did I put my measure? You notice I put it in budget, which I didn't want. In fact, what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna create a quick table to organize my measures. Now this is a simple trick that I use and recommend for the most part. It does have a bit of trade off. So here I'm gonna say formulas, just load it. All right, so I have the formula table loaded over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the column in there. I don't really care about the column. 
and that makes it disappear, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to my reach measure and change the home table to be formulas. And now uh, the new ones that I'm going to create are going to be right here in the formula. So I have reach defined here and I'm going to stick that on my graph and I'm going to change it to a, what is this? Multi row card. Perfect. And let me make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. So I got, that's my reach. And next thing to define reach frequency for frequency. That's how many times they're purchasing. Let's first calculate how many purchases were made overall. So I'm going to say how many orders were placed. And this is also a distinct count because their table is at the line item level. So uh, this one is sales order key. So great. So if I do a distinct count of sales order key, that's, uh, that's that. And that's in formulas, whole number, comma, perfect. So that's my sales order count. And now as the next step to say, what is my frequency? I can say, well, this is my total sales order count. And if I divide it by reach, how many customers came in, then I'll get how many times they came in. So if I had 300 orders in total and my reach was a hundred customers, then on average, they came in three times. They made my transactions three times. So we're going to change this to a decimal number, maybe a single digit. Uh, probably that's enough. And I'm going to add my frequency in there. So 3.2. So that's the average for adventure works. Looks great. And the last one is yield. So every time they came in, how much did they spend? So I already have the total amount measure, which is just a sum of sales amounts so of sales. But if I divided by, well, how many orders were placed? So if let's say they spent again, $300 in total, but the order count was hundred, then on average for each order they're spending every time they come in, they spend $3. So that's my yield. Oh, come on. And let's make it auto. Perfect. So, uh, but once, uh, of course, now the magical part is, you know, the magic is in the measures and the magic is that you define once use everywhere. So now that we have once defined reach frequency and yield, we can slice and dice it by pretty much anything we want. So let's start with our reach and I'm going to slice and dice it by our month year. Let's see how that looks. And let's make it a graph. Let's get the sorting correct. Okay, glorious adventure works data. Let's actually stick in an year slicer. I think 2016 is the most sensible year in the history of adventure works. So we have reach and and we can do the same graph. Maybe I'll stick this to the side. Reach frequency and yield. And in here I can swap instead of reach, I can say, show me the frequency. And in the last graph, I can say instead of frequency, show me the yield. All right. And, and of course I can slice and dice it by pretty much anything that I want. Let's uh, stick in product category slicer over to the side. Now we could look at this data, but uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I get tired of adventure work. So why don't we look at a real data set and see what that looks like. So this is for a real business and this actually happened. So I was at the client site and I leveraged the RFI approach that I learned from Purva and I showed them these three graphs and it blew them away because they had never quite looked at things at this perspective. So I started off with the reach and I said, Hey, look at reach. You guys are growing. That's a positive trend. You're knocking it out of the park. That's terrific. So you are reaching more customers. That's great. Now, if you look at frequency, I mean, are people coming in again and again and, and buying more frequently? Well, not so much. I mean, it's a positive trend. You go about from 1.21 to uh, 1.3, right? So it's, it's an upwards trend but it's still not, not, uh, you know, growing by a, a big number, a big percentage. Now that may be okay because in this case, this was a B2B. So maybe they wouldn't come back and purchase that frequently, 
But yield was a different story, and this is what caught everybody's eye, that, oh boy, look, the yield is going down. Now, again, I mean, that could be so many reasons. This could be due to competitive pressure or something else, but you, you get the idea that by splitting into these three ways, now you have a clear way of thinking. Now you can say that, yep, if we had been spending to try to get more customers, that seems to be working, where we have an increasing our reach. If we were focused, we were probably not focused on frequency, not in this case, but yield, we would like to go up. What can we do? Can we bundle items together when they check out on a cart? Can we suggest other items? Can we upsell? Can we downsell? So you get the idea. I mean, it just helps us focus our direction, uh, focus our effort and say, hey, what do we do next? How can we increase whatever metric we're focused on? And in this case, that was revenue. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.